Um, let's get the meeting underway. I'll call roll. Today is Thursday, October 20th already, 2022. And this is a meeting of the Concord Middle School Building Committee. Uh, Alexa Anderson, are you with us today? I am present. Thank you, Corp Booth. Present. Good morning, Heather Bout. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, Frank Cannon. Yes, I'm here. Good morning, Frank. We can't see you, but we can hear you. Thank you. Justin Cameron. What's going on? <laughs> Justin, is he with us today? No, Justin can't attend. Sorry, oh, I'm here. You probably called me. Yeah, right. no problem. I actually didn't get to you yet, Lori. No problem. Okay. Uh, Peter Fischelis. Present. Good morning, Don Guariello. I'm present. John Harris. Here. Uh, Russ Hughes. No, Russ. Lori Hunter. Present. Good morning, Lori. Matt Johnson is not with us today. I think he said he was in Las Vegas on, on business, but he's certainly staying tuned. Um, Carrie LaFleur, is she with us? Here. I'm here. Hi. Good morning, Carrie. Pat Nelson? Here. I see you, Pat. Good morning. Uh, Chris Popoff? Here. Good morning, Charlie Parker. Present. Uh, thank you, Charlie. Matt Root. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, uh, Bob Conry. Here. Hey, Bob. Uh, Steven Staszewski. Hi. Hi, good morning, and Gail Dowd. Here. Good morning, everyone. All right, let's get this meeting underway. Lots to talk about today. Uh, we are going to start with correspondence. Heather, are you prepared on that? I'll let you roll right into communications update if you're okay with that. Yeah, Just that tackle good. two and three. Perfect. Yep. Um, um, so on communications, we just had two emails since the last meeting. Um, one was asking us basically not to make any further cuts to the budget. And the second one was questions about universal design and some concerns therein. Um, and that was it for that. So then for communication, um, I will kind of go through a high level update and Alexa can jump in with everything that I missed. Um, <clears throat> there was a sheet in the packet that's kind of a draft of our communication plan. Do you want me to share that? If I can share, or, or should someone else share it? Um, I, I can put it up if you want. Yeah, I was going to say, Ian sent it out in the packet. Either However, way, you sure, that'd be great. Ian. Um, so, well, let me get to it. Terrific, thank you. <clears throat> um, so we did have a communication subcommittee meeting um, a couple of weeks ago, and we went through, to put together a plan for the next few months to get ready for our special town meeting. Um, it should look very familiar. It's very similar to what we did last time. Um, as always, our goal is to be totally transparent and to get out information to the town as broadly and comprehensively as possible. Um, hey, Heather. So Heather, can I just step in? I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. I do want to say that at Monday's select board meeting, there was a, a schedule that was approved. So we'll just confirm and I think you might have done that ahead of putting this together I but did so, I saw yeah. that schedule and so it should this should sync up with it but if anything Perfect. doesn't again, no I just good. wanted to let the greater committee know for those that didn't tune in Monday to the select board meeting um, they officially approved the schedule so good point <laughs> and well, okay there you All right. well, good. um <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, so yes, there is a there is a schedule that should sync up with it. Um, the basic concept here, again, it should all look familiar, is public forums, coffees, which will obviously have a presentation. Um, we thought about a one pager, which might need to be more than one page, but the idea of a one pager kind of summary sheet that can be uh, on our website and a, an easy quick glance for people. And then obviously all of the outreach that we do by email and social media and everything. Um, so a little more details. What I'll do, let me just, I'll go through this high level and then um, Alexa and I are happy to take questions and input and obviously we just want this to be the best plan possible. Um, so for forums, we, we debated kind of one forum versus two and realized the finance committee hearing is in November. We were talking about a forum in November and didn't want to, well, basically compete with that or, you know, it seemed like there were two different ones on the same thing. So we figured the finance committee hearing is the perfect first public forum really. And we will help to promote that as our first public forum. 
Um, and then we will have a CMSBC hosted public forum in January, uh, about 10, well, 10 days before the special town meeting, because that seems to be when a lot of people get more engaged in the process. Um, our own will be hosted by the co-chairs and the superintendent, um, as in they'll present for us. It'll be held via Zoom at 7 p.m., so kind of a standard big everybody forum. Um, the coffees are a little more informal, usually small group settings. Um, they actually can be in-person or Zoom. We haven't specified each one here as in-person or Zoom yet, but we did find last time we were doing this that Noon time was a, a, probably the by far the most popular time for these. Coffees in the evenings didn't really get anyone. Um, noon and mornings did really well. I think noon time because they tend to be friendly for both working people and non-working people because a lot of working folks would just join at lunch. Um, so we made these noon and some mornings. Um, again, this is a draft schedule, so people have feedback, feel free. Um, but we're looking at a couple in November, um, actually three in November, one at the beginning of December, and then kind of take a break because it, because people don't really want to come to these things in December when it's so busy, and then kick up again and have three in January, um, the last one being just two days before the special town meeting. We did find that those coffees in the last week before special town meeting last time were well attended, so we wanted to keep going all the way through there. Um, so at the forum, obviously, and then at the coffees as it's, as it's appropriate and people are interested, we will have a presentation. Um, thanks to Hill and, and uh, SMMA who are working on this forum for us. Um, we will have a presentation. We don't have a draft of that now, but the, I have just kind of a summary of highlights of what will be in it so that we're all on the same page there. Um, context is really the eco economy and inflation. Obviously, we've heard that question multiple times from select board and, and finance committee. What's the context here? Um, comps are always important, of course. That's been asked of us. We want to see comparable recent bids, what's going on um, locally in terms of school projects. Construction data, I know, is very broad. Um, it, it's not just those first two, but some other things specific to our project. We've had a couple of people forward questions or data points that they would like to see in the presentation. So that kind of captures all of that right there. Um, then I think most importantly is really the summary of the two options for moving forward. Um, we all know we initially talked about three options, um, but decided that the third option, really the full price option without any value engineering was not going to move, be moved forward. So we have two options. One is to move forward with the current design post VE and the budget increase. Um, and obviously we'll look at that today. And then the second option is to maintain the 102.8 original budget and that's with further cuts. And so we need to give summaries of both of those, what they look like, what the budget increase entails for the post VE version um, and what the building would generally look like, what kind of cuts would be necessary to get to the 102.8 again. So summary of those two. And then also value engineering completed to date, I think is very important. We've got a lot of questions about that, both pre-estimates and post-estimates, all the VE that we did. Um, so that's what the presentation, at least that's what we're um, slating the presentation to look like. And if you can keep going, there's a second page, terrific. Thank you. Um, so then we also thought uh, it would be tough to get all of that into one page, but we thought there are going to be people who don't want to come to a coffee or forum and just want to look at something and say, all right, let me read through a quick summary and understand this. So we want there to be a one pager, even if it's a two pager, whatever it will look like, this has to be worked on. Um, but we will make that available online so that it's easy to find information on the website and then we can distribute it to all of our lists who we reach out to also. Um, that should include basically a summary of the presentation info and the background info that would be necessary to make an informed meeting. Uh, sorry, an informed decision at that meeting. Um, so communication vehicles, this is pretty much our standard. Most importantly, we will work with the town of Concord and their announcements and social media and email. Um, Want to make sure we, we hit their broad reach. Um, then our own and the school committee subscriber lists. Um, now, our lists, just as a reminder, include many, many independent organizations who then forward our information through their newsletters and out to their groups. And we will specifically ask them 
as we send this to, um, to forward it to their groups. Um, so this group, although this list looks like only seven or eight items here, it's actually a very long list, including all of those independent organizations. Um, we'll use our own social media, the superintendents, district update and social media, um, and then some other independent local ones like Living Concord, obviously the newspaper, the Concord Journal, the Concord Bridge is the new newspaper that's about to launch uh, tomorrow, actually, uh, and listservs like Nextdoor and groups.io and um, pretty much anything we can think of that gets out to the whole town. Um, then lastly, uh, we will do some targeted outreach. Um, a lot of these groups are on our distribution list already, but if you'll remember last time, we actually reached out and went to a bunch of groups in person. Um, if certain groups really want us to do that, we might be able to fit that in, but given our timing here, we, we can't necessarily go to the meetings of every single group, but what we will do is reach out to them specifically with invitations to come to our forums or to a coffee as a group or something like that. Um, so you can see the list, I won't go through it all. They're all groups that we've, that, that we've reached out to and met with in the past. Um, so that's kind of the high level. Alexa, what did I miss? <laughs> no, nothing. I mean, that was literally a play-by-play -play of our meeting. So you miss awesome. nothing. The only thing that I would offer is um, all of our noon coffees were on Zoom. And I think that was helpful because um, people who were at work didn't need to leave work. True, that's true. So yes. anyway, the so noon ones. that's just a thought that I had that we yeah, didn't go. That's a good point. The new, yes, you're right. I forgot about that. The noon ones are definitely on Zoom. Yeah. The morning ones could potentially be, you know, one or two could be in person if, yeah. if there seems to be interest in that. Um, great. So I'll just open it up to, or to the chairs first, I guess. Any questions or thoughts there before? I, I just wanted to make a pitch that if anyone had interest or availability to help out, I'm sure you guys on the communication subcommittee might Absolutely. appreciate that. <laughs> definitely. Uh, yes, we would definitely take extra help, extra hands on deck um, for anybody who's interested in, you know, giving more input and being involved in this. So, and, and Heather, I assume that um, the same goes for if there's anyone who wants to attend any of these meetings. Oh, of course, everybody is welcome to all yeah. of these. Yeah. yeah, yes, they're open to anyone. I, I figured that was a given, but yes, good yeah. to say it out loud. Thank you, Pat. I think this is very thorough. I'm, I, you know, I think you guys have done a yeoman's job and I, I can't even think of anything else I would do except stand in the middle of Concord Center and uh, hold a <laughs> sign and rant and rave that people need to pay attention to this. Right, but exactly. You've done a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. Um, then we're happy to take questions and feedback from the rest of the group, too, if anybody else has any thoughts. Sorry for the addition here. Heather? Yes, Gart. Through, through the chairs. Uh, sure. Might we want to reconsider the absence of even one evening meeting of our own? Um, I just wouldn't want people to misinterpret this as being so heavily weighted toward people with uh, without traditional work schedules, even though those. Yeah, totally. Schedules. We debated that and we thought that the two forums were the evening ones because those are kind of the most heavily weighted ones. Um, again, if the group feels like we need more, if we need to make a coffee or two evening, we can. I've, I've no. Just, just a thought. Problem uh, with that. But, yeah. Um, I don't know. Is there a anyone else have thoughts? Yeah, there's on? three in the morning, two in the evening, and one, two, three, four in the midday. That's sort of how it goes. Two evening. Three morning. Three morning, four yeah. morning. Yeah. We thought that was a pretty even distribution, but. Okay. Yeah. Just, just curious how the, the world has shifted with work, work schedules. Don't yeah. Know what's best. Um, you know, Heather, I, I think that um, it wouldn't hurt to put an evening on there. On the coffee schedule bar? Yeah, on the coffee okay. schedule. And since I'll probably be the one using my evening to be there, I'm happy uh, <laughs> okay. to do that. <laughs> um to uh but i think that that might be a um just just a to put it on there it may not be well attended but we might get a surprise and okay. that way we're evenly balanced um 
With that the, sounds good. Okay, Alexa and I will work on that. We'll pick one of the maybe the morning. I think we should do that in January instead. Yeah, I think. Yeah, so. yeah. I would, I would, I would say so as we get closer okay. to, to town meeting. Maybe an early to mid January, either the fifth yeah. or the eleventh. We'll make an evening. Wow. Perfect. I think that's good. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you, Court, for bringing that up. Um, other thoughts or suggestions? Again, we're open to this. Like we, I mean, we want this to be something that everybody has full ownership and engagement on. So, so please bring up that. Uh, Heather, I assume you'll be thinking about locations, uh, yes. high school or Harvey Wheeler or you name it. Yeah, we again, we hadn't gotten there because yeah. a lot of them will be Zoom. But for the for the couple in person ones, yes, we'll make it somewhere very central. Great, thank you. Located. Sure. Thanks for all this work. No problem. Um, I don't see any others. Okay, if um, anybody else thinks of anything, um, no, Heather, to... Heather at some at some point, it may be unnecessary for all of us. I don't know, but um, would it be valuable for you at some point to take three minutes and advise us how not to overstep the the line toward advocacy as committee members as we embark on this yeah that's a great idea um i mean we I mean, are advocating the project by virtue of being on the committee but we can still get ourselves in trouble if we're right not we can't advocate for specific votes. Um, <laughs> so i can i can do a very high level of that now and then maybe as we get our information pulled together oh and i see steve's hand too hold on a second um, as we get our information pulled together, we can kind of look at that again in more detail. Um, for those who haven't been on a lot of committees or <laughs> don't remember well from <laughs> February, um, we cannot, we, like Court said, by virtue of being on the committee, obviously we are advocating and working for the project, but we cannot use, the, the legal definition is we cannot use town resources, which is really anything the committee does, to advocate for a specific vote at town meeting. So what we put out will not at all be saying, you know, come vote for more budget or anything like that. Um, to the point that's been made several times, we just wanna give options and we want people to know what they are. So what we send out will be purely informational. It will be, there is a town meeting. The reason is, you know, uh, increased estimates on the project, there are two choices for the town. One is to increase the budget by this much. The other choice is to maintain the budget. And this is what that would entail for the building. So it needs to be, in terms of the information on the vote and the meeting, it needs to be informational and neutral. Um, Alexa, you looked like you're about to add something. To yeah, that. I mean, when I, when I like run around in my regular person life, I always say like, this is your opportunity to have your voice and opinion be heard, whatever that might be. That's just sort of my standard line that I think, you know, is very neutral and you can give as much, you know, fact-based information as you retain in your head. And that's just sort of always what my concluding line is. And I think it's a pretty safe one. It is, and really important. And I think we've all talked about that. We, we, this, the reason we're doing this is that we all want the town to have a say. We want people to be able to decide. So we can say, come out and vote, have your voice heard. Like Alex said, you, you can't suggest which way people should vote, but absolutely we should all be encouraging people to show up to town meeting and have their voice heard on this. Um, Steve. Yeah, so one of the things that I think we're maybe missing as an overall general understanding of the process that we're undergoing is the timeline for requesting a warrant that we voted on opening a warrant in middle of November-ish, and then actually having the town meeting with a, with, a, with a motion that we agree on, and how that ties back to our design schedule and our cost estimate schedule. That should be clarified, I think, and based on just reviewing the footage from the other meetings of other finance committee and the select board, I think making sure the public is aware that we asked for the 115 because it was a map that we couldn't go back on and it's called estimating because it's we don't know so that clarity of why that number exists out there what our forecast is now that we have the 60 percent in, in hand we'll have the 90 percent in hand before the town meeting happens i think that clarity around that would be helpful to include in a forum or copy 
Yeah, that's a great point. Basically, why the 15 as the not to exceed. Um, and also clarity on what our eventual number becomes. I mean, we'll discuss what the warrant, not whether it's 115 or whatever it is. We'll discuss our recommendation on the warrant number today, I assume. Um, but there's a good chance that once the 90% come in, which is right before special town meeting, we will establish what we're actually going to ask for at that town meeting, which might be less than 115. So you're right, both the actual number that we're gonna ask for and then why the warrant number was higher and how we got there and everything. Thank you. you. Know, that schedule right there. Yeah, thank you, Ian. I just sent this to Ian as you guys were talking. This is I, um, what came out of Monday's um, meeting. I dropped this into the folder as well. Perfect, thank so. you. Yeah, so this special town meeting schedule is exactly, yep. So the war the warrant was opened on Monday, as it stands. Perfect. Yeah, and that's a good point. We'll make sure that our communications and presentation are clear on what this whole timeline has been and why the numbers are what they are. Thanks. Well, yeah, it's like it's the the most important thing is the number is high because we can't go back on it, right? Right. Exactly. You know. Yeah, we can't bring it higher, but we can bring it down. We're responsible for the schedule of the project also, and that's the best way to guarantee the schedule if we can make it work. Right, exactly. Um, great, that's a good point, thank you. Um, anything else, Matt? Sorry, Chair, is it okay that I'm calling on people? I'm just yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. Thank you, and sorry, maybe this isn't so much a communication, but along that, that line of setting that number, do, do we have a schedule of when we will officially set that final number that we're asking? I think it's just what what Heather discussed. I think we're you know we will we're all we can do is make a recommendation to the to the uh, select board as to what number they would put in the warrant. And but when we get to town meeting, we would have another number, and we would. Um, I believe in all likelihood be waiting for that 90% to, to make that recommend, you know, what that number would be that we would bring to the floor of town meeting. So we don't expect to be dropping that number before we get that, that 90%. We can, that would be um, a discussion and it would be, uh, we've, we've come up with 115 and I think we, what we really need to do, Matt, is go through the 60% um, estimate and see where we are now as, as we look at that number. Okay, thanks, Beth. Charlie. Charlie, you're muted. You are still muted, Charlie. Yeah, I just want to. I wanted to second the the comment around uh, being clear about how we get from whatever the warrant article number is that we put in the warrant that we agree on today to the number that we're going to have, uh, you know, for the for town meeting. And I think people ought to be people ought to understand that. I, I don't think we understand it yet, and I think that the, our constituency ought to understand that as well. And I think you know, there's some VE stuff that's still open. I think that there's a desire on the part of some people to have additional discussion about some of this stuff. And, you know, to know that the, the building may change somewhat uh, during this process. And I think that is to be expected as we move from where we are today to 90% and then to the town meeting number. Can I just be clear? What VE is still open? Well, I think we had a bunch of TBDs that, that were listed out at the last meeting. What were they, and, uh, as a purchase. reminder? What were they? Yeah. Well, uh, uh, for example, the, the bollards. Um, I don't think we finished the discussion on the bollards and the way the curbing would be done. And, and uh, I don't think we finished the discussion on on the, the, we didn't have a final number on the AV, which went to 15%. I think the bevel was not, we didn't have a number on that. I, I just think some of this stuff is, I mean, something was estimated, so I guess our professional. Well, it wasn't closed. That wasn't closed out of that meeting, so I, I we didn't have those numbers. 
So uh, it was. I sent a, I sent a revised value management log that added those values in, uh, which was distributed. Oh, so those were those were determined then. Yeah, something had to be decided in order yep. to be estimated. Is I guess what I'm getting at. So I just wanted to have clarity on that. Well, okay. So uh, let's assume that everything that was TBD has been been resolved. Are we going to have, you know, should we be communicating out any process for additional changes? Now, maybe you're saying there won't be any more uh, changes oh, until we get well, to 90, but I think we need to be clear about this with the in the communications. Charlie, I think um, we're going to get to that later in the meeting. I think we will will be discussing the the way we will be explaining the potential other changes we could make to the building to bring it more in line with the budget. But but that that's for a future agenda item. So I'd rather well, not. Yeah, I, I think I think that's fine. I think the point is is how do we get from the warrant number that we proposed today for the for the article and to the final number for the warrant that that need that process needs to be clarified to the to the people that come to these meetings. Okay. Are there any other comments? Good job, uh, Alexa and, and uh, Heather. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for all the input. Good morning. You can always reach out to me. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Um, I think our next agenda item is the OPM report, Ian, which rolls into a few different topics, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, that's right. Cash flow, pre qual, and then, of course, the estimate. So why don't we move that forward? We'll do. So two quick pit stops here, cash flow, and then the pre-quals, and then we'll get into the estimate. So um, looking at the cash flow update um, through today's date, um, we had some invoices from Hill and SMMA that have been uh, accounted for here, the 407-003. That brings us to a total of... Uh, Four million five fifty nine five oh nine uh paid to date and um here is the graph update so uh still tracking uh you know a little a little lower than uh assumed expenditures uh which is which is perfectly fine so um any questions before we move on Yes. It's just a question. Does it make sense at some point to revise the estimates projected out to June, September 2026? So when I looked at this spreadsheet, the total caps off at 104,316,000. And maybe based on what we're seeing right now, that, that 104 number, it, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, so that, that's a good point. So I think what, what we would do um, when we have a, any, any sort of a budget revision, we would, we would change this. So this is based off of the current, the current budget. Um, so uh, if that is update, updated um, early next year, then we would, we would go back and revise this accordingly. So uh, we, would, we would flush this out with uh, more updated numbers and timelines. So good observation there. Any, anything else? Okay. Um, so just a brief update on the GC and subcontractor uh, pre-qualification process. Um, We've we've shown schedules in the past, just kind of outlining um, our intent to proceed with that, and we discussed it at, at previous meetings. Um, the need to proceed with that uh, in advance of the bid process um, and get these these things underway because it does take some time to go through pre qualification. So um, we started getting into who who the committee. Uh, should be on this particular project and um, essentially 
what mass general law indicates is you need one representative from the OPM, one representative from the architect and two representatives from the owner. So um, I am going to be the OPM representative. Uh, John and Susan will be uh, helping me out in the background on some of the pre pre qualification work. Um, Lorraine will be the representative from the architect. Um, and we reached out to uh, Carrie uh, to get a recommendation on uh, who who should be the representatives for the town. Um, so the feedback there was that uh, Gail Dowd and, and Bob Connery should be those representatives for the town. Um, so this is the the plan as it stands to have uh, this this committee in place for the pre-qualification process. Um, as far as getting started, we we want to get started in earnest here. Um, we're going to set up a meeting next week to start uh, outlining the process uh, with this with this group, and um, this is the kind of the the schedule outline uh, that we have right now. But um, you know, essentially, we're starting uh, in early early November. Uh, going out with an RFQ and advertising, um, you know, no later than mid mid November, um, getting those RFQs back uh, end of November, um, and then we've got a long you know review process. Um, it's a lot of it's a lot of legwork. Um, you know, essentially how it works is is the workload is split up by the various. Uh, individuals and uh, everybody does their due diligence and then they come back with with information and, and results um, and then we start talking about um, you know the 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 pre-qualification process and and um, finalizing recommendations there so ultimately we're working towards a final a final report um, and then a final list so that that's uh, you know early, early February uh, prior to bid. Um, and this is being refined as well. Um, Su Susan's putting together a more detailed schedule uh, for the for that committee, but this is just kind of like high level um, where, we're, where we're headed with the pre-qualification process. Matt, I see you have a question. Uh, I, I wonder, Two, two things, if there need, should be a fifth person on the committee so that there's an odd number in case the vote gets split. And I also wonder if you want to add somebody from this building committee onto that. I am not volunteering for that role, but if we wanna open it up to see if anybody, a representative from this, from, from this building committee wants to be on, on that team. I, you know, we talked about um, this, and Carrie, you may want to chime in. This is um, the town is the owner, and the town would be making that recommendation. And I don't know um, if there's anything in MGL that that prescribes the number of people are on it, but um, that would be, I think, the town's call. Am I right about that, Carrie? Yeah. So, can you hear me, Pat? Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, I'm, I'm driving right now. So we went through a similar, you know, although much smaller process with the commissioning agent. Uh, and that seemed to work real well. And my understanding was it was a similar, um, similar membership on the committee. Is that correct, Ian? Um, s somewhat similar. Yeah, we had we had a few more uh, people on the represented from the town and, and Bob wasn't around yet, but, uh, right. Gonna, okay. Yeah, yeah, was so, there. Yeah. so I, if, if there is a member of this committee that feels strongly that he or she would like to participate in that process, I'm not opposed to it in any way, shape or form, but I, I do think we had a, a really good process with the commissioning agent and, um, and different, if the different parties were well represented. If I may, I, I respect all that. I, I mean, I guess this, the, the, the GC feels like a much bigger decision than the commissioning agent. And I know that 
obviously the town has an important role since they're the one signing the contract. But you know, for example, the the designer that was so, was selected based on a recommendation from the design subcommittee, which had many members of this of this committee on it. Um, and I think the GC is going to play an important role on the success of the project, and and it it may be beneficial to have someone from this from this committee on it. I don't just my two cents. I don't feel strongly either way. I actually am fine either way. I just want to point out that this is just to say that they're qualified or not. So there are credentials that one needs to meet. This isn't selecting the GC. This is not a CM process. This is not a qualifications based, you know, this is just saying subs and GCs are either qualified or not qualified to bid on this. And some of that comes down to DCAM ratings, bonding, that sort of thing. So it's more logistical than, than like- Oh, got selecting. it. Thank, thank you, Don. I, I, that, sorry, that's my misunderstanding. So will this, pre qualifications committee will not be putting forward a recommendation on one. So how- They're just saying um, folks can or can't bid on it based on if they're qualified or not. So it's more of a, and honestly, it's, I don't know, Ian, maybe you can speak to how rare it is that one is not qualified that might want to bid on this. So just, um, it's just basically checking their background, their references, their ability to bond certain amount, you know, to, it. so it's, it's more logistical than we're not picking the GC. We're not picking the subs. It's, it's 149, it's lowest bid, but it's lowest qualified bidder. So this is like making sure they're qualified. So it's just, it's checking their credentials essentially. So Got it. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. yeah, we, we okay. want to make sure that the GC and the subcontractors can handle the scope and complexity of this project. And that that um, you know, so there so there's a vetting process that goes along with that. So ultimately, there's going to be a list of general contractors that we say, okay, these are these are all your pre-qualified general contractors that can bid on this job, and these are all your pre-qualified subcontractors by trade that can bid on this job. It's more about weeding out yeah. anyone who can't do the work than it is about selecting people who can. Yeah. Does that make sense? So you're trying to get rid of, you know, Joe contractor who's never done a school, never done this scope of, of the work that we're asking them. So it, it's more about just making sure the right people are going to bid on it, um, qualified people. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. So anyway, back to, I, I don't have a preference if someone else is, you know, it felt like this was the right group based on the responsibility being on the town, but I'm I'm fine either way, just for reference. So that sounds like we could move along with, from this. If if someone wants to contact Carrie because they'd like to be participating in this, they can contact Carrie Lafleur and uh, and let her know. This starts next week, though. No, two weeks. Do I have it right? November first. Um, we're no, we're we going to have a pre a pre meeting on Tuesday of next week just to kind of set set the stage for the process, and we've already drafted the RFQs for for people to start taking a look at. And okay, so this begins now, ends in February, and is fairly time consuming at times based on the amount yep. of um, you know uh, reading and digging that one needs to do. Charlie, yeah, I I. Uh, was expecting to see the commissioning report in the uh, packet. It didn't come. So before you go in, maybe you could help us understand how we find that document. Uh, what, what, are you, what are you looking for? A, com a commissioning report? Was there, we was, that was raised at the last meeting by Matt and uh, Matt Root. And I think there was some sense that, that there was a report on the initial uh, you know, set of activities conducted by the commission, commissioning agent, and is did, there some? Are there did some he review the documents? Sorry, I yeah. think I missed. Yeah, the, the commissioning agent reviewed the the sixty percent CD plans and specs, and they have provided comments to the design team. Is that is that what we're talking about here? Whatever, whatever, whatever there is. Yeah. So, if I might, Ian. So we we get. Uh, two things, Charlie, from the commissioning agent. One, they write specifications, which are included in our documents. So there's two specifications in the front end. One yep. is envelope and one is general commissioning for MEPs. So those are division one specs that you'll find in our documents. And then the second thing they do is they do a review of the cost estimating set. We received those comments on Monday um, 
via a combination of Excel spreadsheets and marked up PDFs. And we're currently working on those to get those answered. When the, when we put our answers in there, that's when we'll send them back out to the committee so that you can see the questions and the answers. Okay. Yeah, and it, it was the same process for design development. Um, so they they went into the final report. The questions and the answers went into the final report that was um, distributed to the committee. Matt, you have something else? Sorry, that that's for DD, right, Ian? I don't I don't believe have, nope. have the sixty percent CDs gone out, Lorraine. I don't believe yep. I need not, not yet. That's what she was just describing. Was the but, right. So just to clarify, the 60% estimating set went out and that's, we received comments from the commissioning agent on Monday on those. So I have no problem, Ian, we can share out the email from, from Lance and send out, yeah. they're all the comments and questions, they don't have our answers. So we got those Monday, we put our responses in their Excel spreadsheet, that's their process. So there's an area for the designer response. And I our intention was that gets wrapped up in the final 60% report, which is, which we're trying to target um, probably sometime next week. Why that don't you guys wait? In my yeah. experience, they often have questions that are answered in the documents and maybe they just didn't see it or it's not, it's not clear. So it's helpful to have the designer response to say, hey, yep, you're right. We, you know, that wasn't included and we're putting it in the documents or to say, nope, you can find it on sheet or spec number X, right? So, um, it, you, if she distributes it now, you just you won't yeah. have clarity on if it's in the documents or not. If she distributes it next week when her responses are in there, then you'll know what either needs to be included or is included and was just, you know, an oversight. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm fine waiting. I guess I was asking I, I don't think we've seen the 60% documents that the estimators were working off of. I don't think those have been shared with the with the committee. Is that is that true? Ian, I thought you sent out the document links. Um, I will have to double check. Okay. No, uh, we I do not believe we received those document links. So they're available, the um, estimator. So why don't we get those out to the committee today, yep. Lorraine and Ian? Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. No problem. Thanks, Andy. Good. Charlie, your hand's still up. Oh, now it's gone. Thank you. <clears throat> Do we have any other comments or questions about the report? Are you trying to say something? I don't see a hand. No, I don't either. He just may not be muted. Okay. All right, so we'll get into the bulk of the conversation here, and this is all surrounding the estimate results. So, all right, make it bigger, Ian, if you can. Yep. All right, thank you. And everyone should have received this in the packet. So, if you need to open your PDF to zoom in on numbers, everyone should have that link. I think. Yeah, we've got we've got essentially three different documents. Um, it, I also sent the actual backup for the estimators. We're not going to get into that um, in this meeting, but this is this is a roll up of uh, all the final reconciled values. So um, you should be familiar with this. It's the same format as as the previous um, estimates. So essentially, we have uh, the PM and C values here in this column. We have the AM Fogarty values here in this column. Um, these are the reconciled values. We spent all day Tuesday going through a reconciliation process with the two estimators. Um, the reconciled value is an average of these two values. Um, and then on the right is the delta between the two estimates. Uh, so you will see some, some variance there just in the way that they approached uh, the the detail in their estimating process. So um, 
same format again. We go through the substructure, so the foundations and basement uh, construction. Uh, then we move through the shell. So this is um, floor construction, roof construction, the exterior walls, the exterior envelope and roofing uh, components of the building and those associated estimates. Um, the interiors, so starting to, to infill all the interiors in the building with partitions, doors, millwork, stairs, finishes uh, for walls, floors, and ceiling. And um, the associated numbers there. And then we get into the services, so elevators, plumbing, HVAC, fire protection, and electrical equipment. So uh, other general equipment um, within the building and fixed furniture furnishings within the building. Um, the next section, special construction and hazmat includes the, uh, the building demolition, the existing building demo of the Sanborn School and the abatement of that school as well. So those numbers are uh, pretty similar um, site work is a big component um, here. So all the site preparation improvements, as well as site utilities, site electric, um, all those things. Um, and then we talk through markups. Um, so we provided updates on, on markups. And uh, so our escalation now is being projected from uh, the estimate date through bid, bid time. So it's a shorter timeline. So the escalation has has gone down to three and a half percent based on that timeline and what what we're seeing currently in the market and market projections. And then uh, the design and estimated contingency was at five percent um, on the previous uh, design uh, estimate, the DD estimate. We're now down to three percent for um, design and estimated contingency. Um, and then really all the same uh, assumptions here for general conditions for both the main building and site work, 20 months and, and seven month duration for general conditions and um, general requirements, uh, 2% bonds at one, insurance at 1%, overhead and profit at two and a half percent. And those are off of the, um, the direct costs. So, the bottom line here is that AM Fogarty landed at a uh, shade over 87 million with their estimate. Uh, PMNC landed at uh, 85.8 uh, on their estimate. So the average of those two is the 86.4, which is what we're showing as the, as the reconciled estimate. And that's uh, $606 per square foot. Um, they're with you know they're within two percent of one another it's it's a, a million dollar and change variance there um which which is acceptable um so that's the um the summary sheet the next document is just the comparison back to the design development uh estimate so these are again the reconciled values for design development. These do not take into consideration any value management accepted. So these are just the raw values at design development. And these are the, the values that we just plugged in for the 60% uh, reconciled estimates. So you can see- the Ian, just to there. interrupt for a sec, yeah. you mentioned the DD doesn't take into account the VE because that happened after obviously that estimate right. was done. But the 60% does take into affect the decisions that were made based on the VE log, correct? That's, that's Just for correct. clarity. Yep, that's correct. So okay, all, all the VE was captured in the 60% estimate. So that is accounted for. Um, so same, same format, just comparing the two. So you can see some of the variance there. <clears throat> um, actually un, under, uh, a little bit under on the 60% for the substructure. Um, over over on the shell, over on the interiors, uh, over on the services, equipment, um, 
and then uh, over over on site work, and then you start to see some of the things balance out with with um, the contingencies, um, the change from from contingencies and escalation here um, to offset that. So essentially, you're 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 kind of moving money up into into the the construction costs um, as the design and estimates pro progress. Um, and ultimately there, there was a $350,000 difference between the 60% CD estimate and the DD estimate. Um, so what that, what that kind of tells us is that they were, they were, they were neck and neck. Um, however, you know, this does account value for value management and the 60% CD. So, um, you can look at it in that the essentially the the value management that was done um, was offset by escalation in in the market. So um, good good exercise to do, good process to go through. Certainly some savings realized through that process, um, but the the market um, offset was was escalation. Steve. Could you summarize what was carried for escalation and design estimating contingency in the previous estimates as compared to the, the value yeah. shown here? Yep. Yeah. So this this is the uh, DD value. So AM, I think it was AM Fogarty mm -hmm. had 4.67 and PMC had 5% escalation. And then they had 5% for design and estimated contingency at DD. And I have and to- what about that. at CD? Uh, sorry, at uh, ST, originally in January. Do you happen to know that offhand? I, I don't know it offhand. Did you say that it was higher in at SD, that escalation value, or was it five? Because um, this, this kind of goes back to my question, and I think we need to also clarify this over our overall process and what we were seeing in the numbers. And thinking back to June, when we saw the, the estimate go above what our budget was, we had a discussion with those two estimators. And you guys talked about how planning for a project that far in the future is, is embedded in some of the figures. And then there's also an escalation value that's carried on top, which we see here in this line. And as we get closer to the actual date, uh, you know, the, the future, you know, factor within the numbers of the hard costs above the line is, you know, galvanized, I guess. And the, the escalation, <laughs> you're showing three and a half rather than five. So that also decreases. So I, I would love yeah. to make sure that we are clear on what our numbers have included in the past and what they include now so that yeah. we can say where, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to do and say, and I think we've done a good job at is isolate the problem to the inflationary market and you know and then making sure that our design is, is consistent so that's a yep. critical piece to understand over the course of the overall year you know how those numbers have changed yep yeah I think you, can i just make a point on that the escalation it uh, you have to look at it annually i asked this question yesterday when i saw this for the first time I said, okay, the three and a half percent takes us basically to bidding, which is, um, I think, March, March or April, right? Like next spring. Yep. I was like, that's basically five or six months. So is that them carrying 7% escalation annual? And the answer I got from our professionals was yes. Yeah. Um, so, because we're basically halfway to uh, annually, <laughs> we're six months, let's call it, keep it simple, six months um, out from bidding. So that three and a half percent is just, accounting for six months. If you take 5% last June and we're um, just under a year, that's about 7% when you escalate it out annual, right? So I think, and I don't remember what was carried back in SD, but as you know, escalation has changed dramatically in the past year. Um, we used to carry three and a half annually, which is crazy because now it's, I'm seeing it here at a six month, <laughs> you know, so um, it's dramatically changed in the uh, current 
economy. So I don't have the answer on SD like Ian. I don't have that number in front of me, but I think the 4.67 to 5 accounts for an annual of approximately 7%. If I'm not mistaken, Ian and Lorraine, feel free to correct me. I was not in yeah. any, yeah. any reconciled meetings, yeah. um, but typically you look at it as a annual and then it's a percentage to get you to bidding based on how far out you are, right? Yep. So our SD estimates were November of 2021. We carried 5.25% escalation mm -hmm. and 10% design contingency. Yep. And it's typical that the contingency would go down. We went 10 yep. to 5 to 3 because yep. there's more in the documents now, right? There's less unknowns and that's normal. So the design and estimating contingency for me made sense. Like that's a standard jump in um, reduction because you start to see it actually built into the numbers because now it's drawn. Um, the escalation is a question mark. And I think you're saying we carried five something annual, five and a half? Five and a quarter. Five, five and, and a quarter. quarter. In November of 21. Yeah. yeah. You've got to remember this was 21 and, and it hadn't started to. And that at the time, if you recall the conversation we had around that, that, you know, that we felt some people felt that was high. You know, we were in, we were watching the steel prices change. Right. You know, other materials hadn't started to change as much as the steel had at that point, if people recall. So. Yeah. Thank you for the clarity on that. Does that, does that answer your question, Steve? I just wanted to point out, yeah. I had the same question about escalation and wanted to understand, is that three and a half annual? Is that three and a half? Because we're only six months out. So I got my answer on that and it makes sense. Um, I just want to make sure everyone understands that. So yeah, I think it's important if we're going to be forecasting and projecting out this 60% budget value that we all as a committee uh, come together and agree on what the escalation projection is. I know that no one really knows, but Ian, those numbers are gathered from your base, <laughs> right? And from the estimators database. And so how, how, how certain are you of that 3.5 that's shown? Um, I mean, the, yeah, the, these, <clears throat> these suggestions, these recommendations came from the estimators and, and their database. Um, and again, the, they, they kind of gave us a window into how they operate um, a while back when we had them come to uh, one of the CMSBC meetings and kind of talk through their process. But um, you know, they do they do a lot of estimating of of public school projects in the state of Massachusetts. So um, these are these are projections out through through uh, you know bid time, and and so they feel confident in these in these numbers. I think one thing to remind everybody is that the numbers above the line here, the numbers within the direct trade costs are based of what they're seeing bids come in right now. So the numbers above the line are based on today's prices, which are already high, right? We're already seeing bids come in high. So their cost for masonry, their cost for steel are based on recent bids that are coming in right now on the school projects they're working on. So they're carrying today's bidding dollars in the direct costs. And then we're still carrying escalation, which we need to do. I mean, we're not seeing the slowdown in the market. We're hearing it. You know, people are starting to write about it, but the numbers are, are not yet starting to represent that slowdown. And for what it's worth, I've never in my career asked an estimator to change a escalation number. I usually defer to their expertise because they're looking at these numbers every day and following the economy and the market and where, you know, I'm only seeing a small window of my work. So for what it's worth, I, you know, they, we, it's often a discussion, like you can see in DD, they carry different numbers. <laughs> um, it's not always, you know, it's, it's the two of them saying together professionally, here's where we think the economy is. So, you know, I would never want to necessarily ask them to change something. You could certainly suggest that they increase it if we weren't comfortable, but um, you know, they're the ones following the economy closely and the bidding um, market extremely closely. So, and to Lorraine's point, a lot of these numbers are currently inflated in that they're higher than we've seen in historic, you know, um, bidding because of the economy. So those numbers represent that. Carly, you have a question? Yes. Uh, is there a way to net this out in terms of the inflation effect in millions from the current number, which we have, which is 86,455 uh, to, uh, to bid time? 
say that again? Is there a way to is there a way to look at the at the total effect of of, of escalation between now and bid time? Uh, in other words, just to net it out. So you're saying if there is is no need to use those escalation? No, no. I think the escalations we should use them. I just want to no, know I, I, I what know. the amount is that that you know all things being equal, we're at. We're at 86,455 now for the building. What is the what is the total effect going to be then? Well, it's uh, 2.6 million, cost. no? Am I reading this wrong? The number right next to the 3.5 is what that number represents, the 3.5 on the 73 of right above it? Yeah, so 2.6 million is the effect, if I'm... The effect to bid time. Yep. Okay, that's what I... What I okay, I, I think the number's there, Charlie, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, so what you'll see at the next iteration at the ninety percent CDs is, is uh, uh, again another snapshot in time of actual costs in in early January twenty twenty three and an escalation to to bid, which is a very short period of time at that point, um, and then a, a reduction in the design and estimated contingency again at at the ninety percent estimate. Thank you, Ian. So we're looking at we're looking then at at somewhere around we're looking at 108 plus at bid. Is that right? Um, do, do you want to see the the cost projection for the full project? Is the that project for the project? Yes. Okay. I mean, Charlie. All things considered, if nothing changed economically, then that 2.6 should capture <laughs> the escalation in that number. So That's the escalation I, amount, that 2.6 is going to go down, right, um, to whatever two months on a 7% ends up being. Um, but it still should be captured if nothing else were to change. And that's the question mark. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So th this is this is um, a cost comparison recap for special town meeting January February snapshot in June for the design development development estimate snapshot in September for the DD estimate plus the value management that was accepted and then the the current cost which is the sixty percent CD estimate um, so this is a side by side comparison so you'll see you know at at this point in time this was based off of the schematic design estimate less value management accepted of 1.7 million so you had a construction value of 80 80 million 772 477 and that's what the the budget was created on um your cost projection for construction and for the dd estimate was 86 million um <clears throat> with the value management that was done for design development through the month of September. There was a $1.8 million in savings there. So it got you to 84.2. Um, and then the current cost is for the 60% estimate is the 86,455,680. Um, you're not gonna see any, any variance on the soft cost side. So you're not gonna see any variance for uh, architect and, and engineering for admin costs or uh, ff and &E costs. Um, the only thing that you're going to see a difference in is the um, construction contingency. So it's 5% of the hard cost. So as these construction hard costs changed, the 5% hard cost contingencies changed um, in, in these projections, the owner's contingency remained the same across the board. And then uh, below the line carrying uh, two, a $2 million contingency um, across the board as well. So that number remains the same and you start to see how that plays out over time. So there's the 102.8, uh, which is the, <clears throat> the initial budget that at DD, we had 108.4 <clears throat> in September with the value management, we were at 106.4, um, and a 60% CD we're back at one, 108. Uh, it's now 108.7 is the projection out. Um, uh, 
Well, we can all maybe express a, a sigh of frustration with with the continued escalation and the um, that we we worked very hard, but we would be in a worse place if we hadn't done all that that work to to do our value management. Steve, you want to comment? Sorry. There was a comment about the FF and E didn't change, but I thought that there were a few items that we deferred from hard cost to FF and E, and the shelving was one of those things that came to mind. And I, I tried to look up uh, what that actual VE decision, uh, you know, contemplated, but I would just want to double check that. Because if we added scope to the VE, FF and E scope, the budget, if it remains the same, then I don't know what that means. It was the media center bookshelves. Good point. Yeah, we took out the built-ins in the media center and we're, we're move, making those part of the ff &E. At the time, we said that we would just work within the budget. So ff &E is, you know, there's a lot of components to it. So I did not understand that to mean we were increasing the budget. Okay. I would agree. I thought it was to work within the budget, which means potentially making different decisions to have it included, right? Like either a different style chair or desk or whatever within the ff &E budget to allow for those shelvings to be part of that without an increase, but it decreased the hard co the construction costs because they weren't then under the millwork section, the custom. Um, yep. um, <laughs> because otherwise there's no savings. You're just moving the money from hard costs to soft costs. <laughs> You're just moving dollars. There's not a saving. So the effort in VE and saving that money says, let's make other decisions under FF and E to have those shelves included and take it out of the hard costs of the custom millwork section. Yeah, yeah so essentially hold, holding the line on the FF and E soft cost in, in order to realize the savings. Anything else uh, specific to this? All right, Don, I assume we're going to move to the next. next yeah. <laughs> I assume so. Okay, so everyone's clear on where we are. If there's any follow up questions or anything anyone needs, feel free to reach out on that. Um, so, Pat, this is actually, I'm going to look to you because okay. you were in attendance for this, but the finance committee meeting from last Thursday, a week ago, what was that, the 13th? I think I sent out the recording of that um, for folks to tune in. Unfortunately, it was fairly late at night by the time it uh, came up on the agenda. Um, Pat and Lori happened to be there. I had a conflict and wasn't able to attend, but if, Pat, you want to debrief for those who didn't have the time or capability to watch the recording and then talk about what um, some of the requests from the finance committee of our committee might be. Yeah, so I think if anybody watched the finance committee, the finance committee is doing the work that the finance committee is charged to do, which is to look at the impact of uh, municipal projects on, on citizens' taxes. Um, and so that that was really the focus of their meeting. There really wasn't um, a whole lot of new information that we could bring to them, but the but what we were, took away from them was a very clear request that we um, put together a uh, uh, explanation that's very clear of what the building would look like if we had to go back, if we went back to the 102.8 uh, million. So, Which for, sorry, Pat, for clarity, that just means it doesn't, the vote would not pass, right? Like if it's a no. Yeah, if the vote doesn't pass. Yeah. Um, but what they want is to be able to, in the, you know, in these intervening weeks uh, and months before special town meeting to be able to explain at finance committee hearings and for people to really understand the implications of what we would have to remove from the building in order to get to that 102.8. Um, so I took away from the meeting that that's that we need to do that, that we need to go back and 
We need to not go through line by line. We've done our value management. Um, we've been very clear that our value management was um, designed not to negatively impact the program, the educational program, that we are building a school. And so everything we took out, um, I think we are all comfortable with. We're not gonna go back over any of that. And what I propose is that we ask our uh, professionals to go through again and take out what our, our give us some idea of what we would have to take out to get down to that 102.8. Um, and I think that this is where the rubber hits the road and we have to start talking about the, the big rocks, the very big rocks of the, the gym and the auditorium. Um, the, uh, you know, there's a sacred cow in this project, which is sustainability. It was an amendment uh, made to the, to the charge for this committee to be net zero, but the, those are big numbers, the triple glazing. And, um, you know, we're gonna have to look at those big things. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but it does mean that the town needs to understand how we get to 102.8. And for reference, our professionals had put something together that was prevent, uh, presented <laughs> uh, to the select board. Um, what meeting was that? Any end of September? The 18th of 18th? September, I think. Yep. Um, oh. That showed an option C, I think it was called, that got us back to budget at the time, which of course today we have new information, um, but at the time there was, and it's hard to show graphically, but Ian had um, shown some slides there as well as a decision tree that talked about what would happen if it didn't pass. Yep. Um, so that's helpful and I think that will be updated to be able to share out and to communicate clearly you know, what would happen if. Yeah. Um, so I think maybe- so I, that's Yeah, yeah, I, I, I cleaned it up last night. Um, I apologize for not getting it out in advance, but um, I was working on it late. So uh, I can share that now and kind of tee up the scenarios for you guys, just so we can talk through it. Um, the thing I think I, I want to be really clear about is that we went through an um, enormous amount of work going line by line and analyzing the impact on the building of certain choices that we would accept or reject. And I don't want to discount that hard work. And I, I want to be really clear with our um, other town committees that our charge is to build a school and to follow an educational plan and that that is what we did. And we are now um, veering into uh, areas that we didn't feel were to the um, benefit of the school. But if we, if we have to do it, they still don't touch the educational, they don't profoundly negatively affect the educational plan. Um, so what, what I tried to lay out here was was two basic scenarios um, for the special town meeting and um, to kind of talk, show, show something that we had shown the select board uh, to understand the decision making process. And at the time, back in September, um, you know, we, we had shown the committee this decision tree um we wanted to put some impacts some schedule and cost impacts to some of the decisions here um that were on the table at, you know at the, at the time so um the first thing we did was try to understand what you know stopping the design would do um and what kind of schedule and cost impact impact that would be uh for the project so um we're kind of beyond we're kind of beyond that at, at this point because we had we have since talked through it as a committee and um have you, you guys had voted for smma to proceed with the 90 and 100 percent designs um with the caveat that their contract is is going to be amended um accordingly uh so that they're not designing to back to the 102.8 budget so, but this, this illustrates what that would have looked like had we stopped design, you know, essentially it's a two to three month 
uh, delay uh, in the job and a cost impact of we were looking at 0.7 uh, inflation increase per month. So that's you know 102 to 108 million for um, inflation increases you know into 2023 and then um, considering uh, operating costs of the the Sanborn facility um, and the school facilities at around 50k a month. That's another two, you know, two to three months is 100, 150k. So we were looking at an estimated cost impact of 1.3 to 1.95 million there for that for that um, stop design uh, scenario. Again, we're we're beyond that. So what we're what we're zeroing in on now is what does it look like for the vote to fail um, in um, in January of next year. Um, so same type of analysis, schedule impact, we're thinking six, six to nine months is what the schedule impact would be. Um, you'd have a school opening in September of 2025 in lieu of the February 2025 opening that, that we're proposing uh, to maintain the current schedule. Uh, and the cost impact is significant um, with the 0.7 inflation per month. Um, for the six to nine months is 3.6 to 5.4 million, um, 50K a month for operating costs at 300 to 450,000. Um, and then this would be a scenario where SMMA would have to completely, you know, redesign the building to get back to uh, the 102.8 budget. So we put in a placeholder, uh, you know, just discussing this with SMMA, we put in a placeholder for 600,000. For now, so we're looking at an estimated cost impact of 4.5 to 6.55 million. Um, very, very significant number there. Um, but this is this is something that we presented to the select board. We wanted to make sure that that this committee saw it as well. Um, so that leads us into the scenarios. So the two scenarios, one being the special town meeting vote passes, and we proceed with. With the with the cost, uh, with the idea that there's a not to exceed cap of 115 million. Um, so right now the current cost at 60% CD is uh, 108.7, uh, falls within that not to exceed value. Uh, we don't know where we're going to land with with 90% CD estimate. We've got a, a, a good idea of where we think we're going to land, but we got to go through the process. So early January we will have this number. Um, to, to inform, you know, where, what, what's going to be brought to the special town meeting. But as, as it stands now, uh, this committee has voted on the, the 115 not to exceed. That's what uh, I believe is on the Warren article uh, moving forward. So that's scenario one. That's if the vote passes, we're going to maintain schedule. Uh, we're going to, we're going to maintain bidding the project uh, early, early next year. We're going to get into construction in May of next year, and we're off to the races. So uh, that's that's one scenario. Second scenario here is if the special town meeting vote fails. So that's a hard reset. That's going back to the $102.8 million budget that was established in January of this year. And um, so the way the way to look at that is, you know, essentially taking your current cost. So right now we're at the, the best information we have is, is our 60% CD estimate. That's 108.7 million. When we have the 90% estimate, we can insert that va value in here. Uh, you need to add in the cost impact for the schedule delay of six to nine months because we're talking about a complete redesign of the building at that point. So I took the middle, the middle ground number between 4.5 and six and a half. So 5.5 million for that delay. That's an approximate value. Um, and then you have to start thinking about big, big value management and what it takes to get back to that one of $2.8 million budget. So uh, you're looking at 11.4 million in, in value management at that point. Um, and as I've shown here, a significant scope reduction. So you're not you're not getting the building that you envisioned. Um, you're not getting the building that that is consistent with the 
with the uh, ed plan at that point and and it's not consistent with some of the things that we hashed out last year with adding in an auditorium increasing the gym size taking on community uh, input in the project um, so it's it's a drastic change and um and that's that's you know unfortunately what it would look like uh if you were to revert back to that if, if it didn't pass at that point um a, a different building and one one way to look at it here, here's the value management log um that we've we spent you know all of july august september reviewing with the committee uh, a lot of time spent on this log and there was eight, there were 82 items on this log um at the end of this exercise uh everyone was comfortable with accepting 1.8 million in in value management um to get to the back to budget value considering the scenario that i just played out you know we we laid out another 9.7 million worth of value management you would have to accept all of that and an additional 1.7 million to get to that 11.4 million uh difference there so um we're, we're talking big numbers we're talking big impacts to scope um and schedule and and it has cost implications so um just wanted to kind of lay out the scenarios and and help you better understand uh the the uh the impacts as we move forward I see a lot of hands. Um, I'm going to start with the top of my screen, Peter. Hi, good morning. Um, thanks, Ian. So I think yep. having having listened to the finance committee meeting, uh, one of the concerns is that they're going to feel that the community may feel railroaded, right? That they don't have an option but to support this because there is no other option that would get a school on budget. And so I think it's going to be. This was helpful as a reminder to um, everything that has been done, and everything that we have uh, looked at to try to get the project down. To so I think it's important that we articulate to the community that we to try to get an option that they could vote on at budget uh, to proceed, number one would have required a whole lot more design dollars. And number two is just not possible in the current configuration of the building. So the only option is to go back, if, if we don't want this building, to go back and completely redesign the building. And that's not something that we could have done to, to have that option available at, at town meeting. Otherwise, I think, you know, there, somebody's gonna bring that comment up and say, well, we feel railroaded because we don't have a, another option to vote on. It's either up or down, and then we're gonna have to wait. So that's, that's what I have to say, thanks. Chris? Chris? Yeah, uh, thanks. So for Hill, one thing just to clarify, if we're at the completely redesigned approach, that would contemplate significant design changes in the academic wing, the public wing, and all the exterior features. We'd really be looking at all of those fronts if we're talking the complete redesign of the project. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that you're looking at everything at that point. Charlie, oh, Steve, yeah. Steve was next. Yeah, Steve. That's okay. Charlie can go. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I listened to the tape as well. And, and one of the one of the messages I heard was between, uh, you know, the, the point where we're at now with the with an eighty six million dollar cost for the building. Uh, is there what what can we do between now and town meeting to shrink the cost of this of this building? And to get this building into into what they would consider to be, uh, you know, a more manageable number and a better place. Now, I don't know what we can do at this point because we, we start to lose flexibility. But I think that's a discussion we need to have. 
uh, you know, are we going to basically say that what we have, what we have, and we're kind of done, end of topic, or are we going to continue to look for ways to, to, to reduce the, the $86, $86 million costs that we have on the table right now? Um, so uh, we could say, well, everything's closed and we're done. And that, that's a clear message. And that basically tells FinCom that, that you know, we're finished with this and it's a matter of packaging the information so they get an understanding around, uh, around what, what, what we, what we uh, uh, you know, will have for, for a building at town meeting. So that, that's, that's my, my question is what can we do uh, that has an effect on the on the design and on the cost between now and town meeting. So, Charlie, from what what I am what, what I took away from the FinCon <laughs> meeting is that they want to see what it would look like if we got down to the one hundred and two point eight. So, what we can do to get down to the one hundred and two point eight is to take out um, eleven million from the project. But what I'm hearing you say, and what we had talked about earlier was, well, then do we go back to the town and say, okay, this is what we'd have to do to get down to 102.8. But by doing this, this, and this, it's not a total redesign of the building, but we can get down to 105 million. We, we can get down to somewhere in between. And I, and I think that's what you're looking for. Am I correct? What I'm looking for is a framework that basically provides, uh, you know, uh, an understanding to to those like the FinCom as to what we are going to do to affect the real cost of this building. Now, it may be maybe it's only, you know, maybe it's a small amount of money, but I think they ask for a good faith effort to to uh, to drive what? those dollars down, to drive what the they, real costs down. What they asked for, Charlie, very clearly. What Prashar asked for was, show us what it would take to get down to 102.8. We could show them some intermediary. If we, if we wanted to go back in and take out some of the other elements, but not all of the elements, and those other elements, and I personally, and this is just me personally speaking, there were some big numbers that surround the gym and the auditorium that do not relate to the educational program. So we could go somewhere in between without taking away the access to the roof so that we can get up to the roof and replace equipment. But, but I heard loud and clear that the FinCom wants us to show them everything you'd have to take out to get to 102.8. And Laura, you were there. Um, I, I wish Matt were here. You guys watched it. I, I, some of you watched it. I, I'm wondering if anybody heard something different. Pat Nelson, if I might. Yeah. Um, I, I, I listened to the meeting as well. And uh, I, I think that that is what Parashaw asked. I think that uh, they didn't have a, all their membership there, but the, uh, the way the, the balance of opinion was keep, keep trying uh, to, to put it simply. Um, I think we would do well. I think we would do well to make a concerted effort to try to bring uh, the town boards uh, behind this project more so than they are now. I, that, that was the, the major message. Maybe we can't achieve current budget because the design is so very, very inflexible that it, it makes it difficult, but I think they wanna see us try. Steve. So on the, um, yeah, I, I also got the sense that they're looking for us to continue trying, but in the back of my mind, I hear Lorraine's comment last time we met of it's, it's really time to stop changing the design. And it goes back to conversations we've had before where if you're in construction documents and you're asking the architectural team to finalize a construction set that is accurate, complete, thorough, and biddable to a very high, de high level of detail, we need to stop changing the design. And so it's like having your cake and eating it too. We, we are faced with the same decision as a town. We're, we're going forward with a design because it's what we felt was the best decision to, to you know, 
set ourselves up for a success here. Uh, so I just caution that uh, thought process of re rehashing another option because the clear ask that, you know, there, there's this ancillary ask of let's keep trying. And I, I, I will be all ears for, for options that people might want to present, but um, the clear ask was what it takes to get to 102. And I think we have that list. We've been presented with that list. We can share that list. And I think we, we, we ought to share that list. Um, I'm like, other point uh, that I was hoping to talk about is if you could go back to slide two in the decision tree, Ian, because there's yeah. some bubbles. There's some bubbles with blue text that I don't think were actually explicitly shared with us until now. I think that that's that's, that's right. Yeah, um, I think we talked a lot about the decision making process and what the facts were behind it were generally understood between the group here, um, and that's why I look at the top line schedule impact two to three months, and I sort of. I'm taken aback because now in hindsight being 2020, that's a clear, you know, that's, that might be what we have decided, but I think the discussion and I just noted the notes down uh, might be a little different. What, what I would recommend or propose as a contrary to what's shown here at two to three months um, would be the decision would have been made to stop the design process at the 60%. We wouldn't have the, the construction documents that we have in hand today. We wouldn't have this estimate today. We would, we would stop the designer and say, wait, we need to stop drawing. We need to go to the town. We need to ask for more money or, or not get more money. And so that process would put us right in about the same position we are now as, as far as discussing what the warrant is and preparing for a town meeting and the town meeting would eventually occur. I think late December was probably a, a, an estimate for something of, of a town meeting that would focus on that, but say it's just the same time frame, early January. So we would we would have a decision in January based on the you know stop design. Do we need more money or not? And so we would have you know either more money at the time, great, start the process again. We would start sixty percent CD in January. We would then continue on to ninety percent CD. Hopefully we're within budget still, uh, and that puts us out to uh, September 1st of a bid set. And so in my mind, that was the decision that we I made to continue with the design. Um, at that time, if we had decided, you know, at that pseudo town meeting that I'm describing, we, we don't get the money, we would be kind of in the same position we are now if the, if the vote fails. If the vote fails in January for us and the current situation, we need to redesign the building and cut 11, 10, $9 million out of the project. I think if we had stopped the design, we would be in the same position. We would be ending up you know, redesigning the building. The incremental cost that I see there is the spend on 60% CD, 9% CD architectural fees. And you, you know, in the cash flow projection, that's a little blip. So the cost and benefit of deciding to continue with the design in my position, my view at the time, I, you know, was the incremental cost of architecture with the, the very good likelihood of passing because of the 30 or 40 emails that we received and the majority of them saying, don't change the design, we'll, we'll fund more. That was the environment that we were all hearing. Uh, and it just seems striking that it would be a two to three month delay. And um, I think that we should revisit that before it was presented outside of this group. Well, is that, um, help me understand, Steve, what you're saying is that two to three month delay, that's moot right now. Or, I, mean, well, the, I mean, if I don't know what the context is, if it, I think if we had stopped the design and then we had gotten approval for the funding, that would put us at a bid date of September 1st, give or take. Um, and so the, the February to September is, is seven months in my mind. Um, and so okay. by proceeding with the design, we had an incremental cost uh, that, you know, I think gets us well positioned to, to hopefully either gain funding or have a decision that we would have otherwise been faced with in February. And so better positions us in February to proceed. I guess I'm not still not following the impact, but if everybody else is, I I totally acknowledge. I, I, I think I'm following what you're saying in that it, 
at a point in time, we thought that this decision was going to be made in December. So if we stop design and we incre and, and then increase the budget in December and then start the design at 90 and 100 percent, then, you know, it's it's the time from 60 percent until December is what we were we were looking at for the delay period. So basically, no, you know, part of October, November, December is is how we were looking at it from a delay standpoint. Put your pencils down and then start back up with with 90 percent CD development um, instead of starting now. And I, I I understand what you're saying in that you're look, you're projecting it out to bid basically a bid impact from what would be April to you're you're doing the math to September of next year. Yeah, I mean we're six months from the time sixty percent CD started to the bid, and if we can't start sixty percent CD until after a town meeting, six months after. Yeah, I think one thing one factor is that we're not actually making a decision now until Jan January, so that's another month that we, I think we do we need to add. update this. And yeah, yeah, we should update it. Yeah. We should put in what the new, you know, what the new impact of what the dates are now because we know them. Yep. So yeah, we, we didn't we didn't know the dates at at, the, at that point in time, but now we do. Yeah. So that's that's yeah, a great. good one. Perfect. Yep. Lorraine, if let me see if I could. If we um, if we just redesigned part of the building, or if we just took off, let let me just go with my auditorium. If we just did the auditorium and the gym changes, does that change anything in terms of the schedule and cost impact? I mean, are there are there changes that we can make that don't also then incur these these big estimated cost impacts from waiting. Pat, I think any any of the changes now are going to impact the schedule. That's what I tried to make clear. Okay. So they are going to impact our design schedule. We can't no make magic stuff so. we can do. That... There's no magic eraser. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I mean the amount of drawings that we have at this point that that trickles into we we would have to we would have to tell people to stop and we'd have to make those changes and then people have to pick up all those changes and then continue. There's just no, there's just too much risk for error. Yeah. And so while it, you know, the, the thought of trying to do more value management at this point is, is going to impact the schedule and there's cost implications to that. So you might be in the scenario where you're, where you're trying to save money, but you're spending money because you're pushing the schedule out, could it could offset cost at that point? So it, it's it, the, the the effort that you're making is is could be for nothing, right? Because time is money. This is what I tried to impress upon the the select board when we first looked at this and the different scenarios. There, time is money and. And that needs to be considered in the decision making process. Heather. Thanks. Sorry. I think Charlie was ahead of me, unless his hand is just still up. But um, okay, I'll just go for now. Um, it, what I was going to say, I guess I wanted to clarify my understanding, and and it's kind of what Ian just said, which is, I mean, back to that question of, are we going to tell the FinCom and Select Board that we're going to keep trying? I think that's a great idea and concept, but my understanding, and especially from this dis discussion, is it's just not an option. It, that in order to stay on schedule, VE is done. And I think if that's the case, we need to be really clear about it as a committee. I mean, are there some things where maybe, you know, as the as the bollards detail come in and little things that come in that could be massaged that save us a few thousand here or there, you know, and if it's part of the process to do that. And the architects can do it. Do we want to do that? Absolutely. So I feel like we should say, if we can massage things to save a little as we go, that's our goal now between now and town meeting. But those are not going to be major changes. We, you know, if if we want to stay on schedule, the major VE is done. And I I just think we need to be clear about that. Um, and and just to clarify, 
I think when, when there were statements about, you know, the, the statement about people feeling railroaded or us not having multiple choices, I think we need to be clear um, and not rep misrepresented in the sense that we all discussed the various choices. Initially, we had three choices laid out, right? One was back to budget. One was a middle ground with some VE. And one was the original design without VE. Um, and so when we went through three, from three options to two, we really only discarded the most expensive one. We kept the middle option, what was originally the middle option as the, the, the second option, right? The higher one. So now we have two options. We have a higher one that was the middle, but is now the highest because we got rid of the most expensive one. So we have the higher one that we're designing to, and we have the least expenses, which, which is back to budget, which will take more design and time and schedule time because there was no way to design two building designs, right? There's no way that we could have come up with now a 102.8 option that does not entail redesign because it would have cost more to be doing two design options until now. We can't just expect the designers to do two different designs at the same time. So I just think that there was some misrepresentation to be honest at the finance committee meeting. And I think we need to clarify that. I think we as a committee need to be very clear we have created options. These are the two options. One of them has a lot, has VE done. And that's our, that's what we're putting out. That's the right now, not to exceed 115, but that number will presumably be lower by town meeting. The second option is 102.8. And as Ian said, he's going to help us figure out what the building looks like to be at 102.8, which is also going to include a schedule delay. So I, I guess that's it. I think we need to be very clear and leave no uncertainty that VE is done and these are our two options. And we have in fact done everything that we can to say the VE process didn't go far enough. Again, it, I, I don't think is a fair statement because we all went through that list line item by line item and we've come up with what we feel is a compromise number that we're putting forth as one of our options. So I'll stop, but I think we need to be clear. Yeah, and Heather, I'll just say, I think that you're right. I, I think rather than considering it a misrepresentation on the part of another committee, it's a more of a misunderstanding. This is Fair. I didn't mean to, oh. right. I didn't mean to say they're trying to mis misrepresent by any means. Right. Understanding just, is fine. I think um, we need to really understand how complicated this is and how we have been spent, we've been living this for, I don't know, 20 years? Has that been what we've been doing? <laughs> so, so engaged in this. But I think that for the other committees and for the community to understand it is, is very difficult. And, um, and so I think that's you know part of the communication and what Steve was talking about in terms of how we communicate what, what this dilemma is. Um, Absolutely, I agree. Yes, we need to make that very clear. So again, we need to decide what, uh, okay, Charlie, I, I see your hands back up. I, I, I thought it went down again, but I see it's back up again, so. Yeah, okay, so I, I just wanna follow on to what Heather said. You know, I don't really disagree with, with much of it. And I, I, think, I think the problem is, is that we have some fairly stark terms here. It's been characterized as, you know, it's either we have to redesign the whole building or everything is done and we have to freeze it. Um, and I, I think that that following along to Heather's comments, I, I think there are opportunities at the margins that we should continue to pursue. And I think we should call out some time to, to try to pursue some of those and clear the air that indeed we have done, quote, everything we can do. And I would just throw up one, one issue as a, well, um, I won't throw the issue up. I, I just just say that I, I think we should evaluate uh, as a group, and we should do it perhaps outside the context of these monthly meetings, whether there is another set of opportunities that we could pursue or not, and just close that out. What are the you, opportunities at the margins that that we can that we can look at? Charlie, would you throw something out? I just want to have an understanding. Okay, well, I'll throw something out. Yeah, the wooden, yeah, yeah the bridge, the, the bridge. I look. 
carefully at the bridge situation that wouldn't bridge and you know quite frankly it's eighty thousand dollars it doesn't make a lot of sense to me uh that you know you couldn't simply grade in the area under i the think bridge. we took that out charlie the bridge is gone yeah oh the bridge is gone the bridge yeah. is gone it's not in the 60 percent. when mike finished regrading with the change that oh, was good. made well, that's, good. Well, that. that's, that's absolutely wonderful i'm, I'm delighted well, except that that's eighty thousand dollars we can't take out now because we've already taken. Well, that, 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 that's fine. I, I didn't know if that was removed. It was, that was one of the PDs. Um, you know, are there others? And I, I, I it would be good to, to uh, you know, take a second pass at that uh, simply to, you know, respond to the, you know, to the FinCom and to the yeah. select board and so forth. Charlie, the question for me is, if we found. Four million dollars of of things that we could take out of the the design from the from the VE log. Say we found another four million. Well, that's going to be eaten up by the the schedule and cost impact. Oh well, I wouldn't. If it's at the margins, I wouldn't want to see any schedule or cost impact. Well, I think that's what I was asking, Lorraine. Are there things? or maybe we're asking the same things are the things that we can take out that show a good faith effort we we find another million but it doesn't incur schedule or cost impact well see, i mean if we're absolutely sure that there's nothing at the margins then we just close it out we're done uh because i don't think we should impact the the, the schedule or, or have a cost impact with what we're doing from here on out unless we choose to take a pause and, and do redesign work which i don't think is warranted by the situation that we're in so that's that's kind of my take on it. So if 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 we can call that out and get some get some opinion on that from Lorraine, that would be good. I can go through. I'll go through the rejected list again, and see if there's anything there that I can flag to bring back to the group. And is there anything on the accepted list that is also, uh, you know, at the margins that could be reconsidered? But the accepted list we've already incorporated. I, I, know you, I know you have, but but let's let's take an example. We had a lot of discussion about the the terrace, three hundred and sixty five thousand, three hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Is that at the margins, and will removing that at this point through a reconsideration impact the the, the schedule and impact the cost? Because that that's external to the building. That's external to the building. I just I'm not saying it should. I'm just saying that, you know would it. So I'm, I might be a little confused. Anything that the building committee accepted as a VE, we've made those changes and they were incorporated as much as we could into the 60% set. And for the ones that we couldn't get in, we gave the, the uh, a description to the estimators to say, this is what we're taking out of the drawings as we continue. So we weren't, as you know, we weren't able to get to everything. So the 60% estimate includes everything that this committee chose to remove from the scope. So if it was accepted, it's either already removed on the drawings or the estimators received a cost estimate assumption memo that said, do not include this in the cost, this is being removed from the scope. So what I was saying is I'll look at everything that's been rejected and see if there's anything there that would not cause an impact to our schedule. Oh, that, that, that's, that's right. Yes, that's, okay. that's exactly okay. correct. I was going to okay. say the first nope. there. Sorry, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's the only fruitful exercise at this point is is looking at the rejected list and anything that could be accepted with the caveat that it doesn't impact schedule in any way. That's the important. Yeah, I, I, I think you've got it right. And I think we're, we're looking what we're asking for is another bite at the apple on some of these items that don't impact to your point that don't impact schedule or cost. That's exactly correct. Now, if I have that right, just say I have it right. You've you've got it right. Okay, and, good. You know, and that, that would be, that. you know, that we're kind of leaning on our architect to tell us what will and will not impact their design schedule because they they do this day in and day out. They understand how long it takes to make changes on on in AutoCAD and on paper. I, I'm good. I'm good right. with that. I'm I'm perfectly fine to accept that. Okay. Heather. Yeah, I guess it's not what I was originally going to say, which is I wanted to get an understanding that we're done with VE, but it sounds like this means we're not. So I guess my question is, can we put a limit on this so that we're, we're not 
constantly asking SMMA to go back to this VE list. I mean, if this is a quick once through and I guess I'm just, I, I feel like we've gone through this whole list and we've asked SMMA to go through this whole list and we keep, keep we can't keep asking them to go through the same list again and again and again. Yeah. So, you know, is Lorraine, is this realistic and can be, can it be a quick once through that we can then be done with and say, okay, as a committee, we are committing that we have to the fact that we've gone through everything and we're done with VE. I just think we, at some point we have to do that or we're not going to let our architects be able to complete what we're asking them to do in detail. Yeah, I mean, I can, I will have a team meeting. We will go item by item on all the, the items and ask everybody, you know, what, what can be changed. You know, if it's a specification change, that's a simple change. It doesn't change the drawings. Usually it's a text change. So there are things that are simple changes. There are things that are not. If they affect multiple trades, then you're waiting for the architect to make the initial changes and then the MEP have to follow. So I will walk through each item one by one. There's something like 50 items that we rejected, right, Ian? That's right. So I'll walk through each of those items at our team meeting and with our team and I'll get an understanding of what might, you know, what's possible and what's not. But I would ask, actually, frankly, I'm gonna beg, that this committee make a decision at the next meeting about that, that we cannot have multiple meetings to decide on it. That's yeah. somewhat what I was getting and, to. And, 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 How and does just, this end? Just, to, just as a reminder here, everything that's in the rejected column, this committee has already reviewed thoroughly right. and has voted to reject. Right. But so, you, was, so you would be going back on what you've already voted on if you want to accept more on this list, you'd be going back and saying yes to something that you've already voted no on. Just I, I, I think that the difference here, the difference here is that we're saying, yeah, we'll show you what we would have to do to take everything out of this project to get it back to 102.8. But, but, but we have to acknowledge that there's this four, $4 million schedule change thing. So it's it's almost like there's a, a, a this third option of, okay, we can take some more out, but this is all we can take out without making a schedule change. You wanna take everything out, then we've got this schedule change and it's gonna null your what, you've, what we've removed from the project. I, I, I don't- just, just to clarify though, is it, I don't, think we're talking about a third option, are we? <clears throat> well, it, it versus almost... just cutting down our number a little more. And I do and I guess what Ian said is my concern that we're going to end up at another meeting next time rehashing a lot of long debates over small items and and ending up where we were with not much of a difference and is that worth everyone's time because these are things we've discussed already. Agreed. I, we don't want to keep going back, but I think the question that we've asked now is, and I think it's going to be a fairly small list and it's not going to make much difference of what we could change without incurring that, that schedule change cost. Uh, and, and I'm afraid I have to go. I have a hard stop at 930. I, I'm just going to have to leave. So Dawn, I'm turning this back over to you. Judging uh, Pat, good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I guess before I put my hand down, I'll just reassert that if we're going to do this, I think we need to make, well, and Lorraine asked for it. We need to be really committed to the fact that this is an efficient conversation and then we close it out and we are very clear that we're done because we need to get there. Yes, we need to get there. And for the sake of our professionals, because as you all know, I do this for a living. I just want to be dramatic. This is the amount of documents architecturally that go into a 90% set. Like literally, this is a half size. These, you know, they are working really hard to get detailed information into the documents so we can get the best price possible. <laughs> so the more we take away from our professionals putting the best drawings forward, the less likely we're going to get competitive pricing. So I just want to be really clear on behalf of the professionals. I have to say it because I'm listening to 
us potentially rehashing things that the committee as a whole has already rejected. I just want to say they need to finish the drawings and they have like two months to do so. So there's a lot of work to get them to the 90% and uh, they need to focus. So Steve, I see your hand. You're muted. A few of the points of the finance committee specifically requested, uh, I just wanted to, to speak on those and invite others to comment on my comments. Uh, this is just my takeaway from what our meetings have gathered. So one of the first things was that there were no goals or deadlines or overall costs that were identified as targets for the VE process. And I thinking back on the overall, all the meetings, um, we had a, a, a deadline of by the time the 60% CDs were issued, we need to be complete with the VE process. That was that's established right. in these meetings. We talked about that. Yep. It might have not have been clear enough. So there, that's my understanding of that. The cost goal was $102.8 million overall. I think that was uh, that was our goal. And we've, we've got a, a plan to get there and we've got a plan to keep the scope. And that's hopefully what the decision is that we're put, putting in front of the town. So those are the two goals that I saw and was working toward, and I hope others agree. Um, the, the value engineering uh, process wasn't only the one that we just latestly you know, took out $1.2 million. That was the value engineering process that was completed on the design development set that we're reviewing here. There was also preliminary design uh, value engineering that happened on the schematic design set to get us to the 102.8. And so the, the value engineering process was continuous throughout design development up into design development and should stop at co construction documents development. So that's what that's why the deadline was the 60%. Um, Hill was brought up as far as budget control and, and uh, you know the, the gatekeeper. I think that Hill has done a good job with presenting the options that were discussed between Hill and SMMA and the other design teams, and they've done the, the, the they've done the scorekeeping, right? Uh, and I think that their their cost control um, measures are going to be much more amplified, and, and we'll come to to we'll come to see more from them as construction gets underway and they're on site and they're managing cost changes. Uh, and change control from very sophisticated subcontractors, by the way, who want to you know, bid the project to win and then change order the project to death. So I think we'll see much more from the Hill team uh, in the future as far as cost control. Uh, we haven't seen that yet. Um, and then also, I just wanna make sure again that we're talking about the right numbers. Today, we have forecasted a total project spend of $108 million. That's close to what we had forecasted as a total project spend. Uh, back in June, and I hope that at the 90% CD mark, we will be very close to that number. We will hopefully not be at 115 million. Uh, we propose 115 million because what we discussed as the requirements put on us to request a warrant, the time to post the warrant, time to close the warrant, time to go to town meeting, a lot could change. We didn't want to risk the schedule of making these hard decisions and, and gathering our our community on a decision uh, by uh, estimating a lower than you know, uh, reasonable number. So we, we over forecasted 115. We will not spend 115. I think no one will hope for that. So the 108, it should be the number that the finance committee uses now to project tax you know, increases on the general public and not the $1,400 on 115 million. It's $1,100 for the, the original versus the the new 108 projection should be the, the, you know, the actual fact that we have from the documentation that we've been provided should be what is used um, to project those tax increases. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to point those things out. Thanks. I appreciate that, Steve. And I had some similar thoughts on um, those comments. So I appreciate you providing clarity. Um, Alexa, I see your hand. Yeah, um, my after your comments, Don, about the professionals needing the space and time to allocate their resources to getting us the best possible documents that will in turn drive the best possible 
and most accurate bid. You know, while I appreciate Charlie's suggestion of revisiting the rejected VE log, I'm wondering if before we take that path, if we should, you know, essentially vote on whether we think that's an appropriate use of our professionals' time so that we understand whether the committee has consensus about whether that's a good use of time or not. So to that end, if I could put a motion on the floor so we can determine if that's a good idea, I might ask for that. You sure can. So you okay. move to take a straw poll, is that what you're asking? Or like I guess, the, yeah. The feeling from the committee if- Yeah, like, is this a good yeah. use of our time? And even more importantly than our time, is this, an effective use of our architect's time. Okay. Um, so we have a motion to second. do a straw poll. Did you just second that, Steve? Yep. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, yes. Question on the motion? Sure. Yeah, discussion, uh, please. Just to be clear, uh, going back to Mr. Parker's comments, if I heard him correctly, he was asking, could we revisit anything and everything that would potentially create a cost savings, uh, potentially move other boards our way, my words, not his, uh, and not impact the schedule. Is that where you're going, Alexa? Well, it, well yes, except that, you know, that is all, the, the larger context is we do have an option that gets us to our budget. So, I just don't understand why we're pursuing, you know, this again. I mean, we 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 know very clearly what can get us to our budget, and we know that, like the admin and educators, for example, are comfortable with that path. I don't understand why we're not comfortable with as a committee with that path. Well, we know, but I, but I didn't, we know that I didn't the larger hear. scope reductions can get us there, and yet, as a committee, we all kind of ignore it. What I didn't hear you ask that we are deciding yes or no on value engineering to current budget. I heard you say value engineering to see what we could achieve. I'm not sure now which way you're going. I, yeah, because I feel like that exercise court has been concluded. And I think, well, and again, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I thought that there was broad consensus that what you're suggesting, which is the value engineering to what we believe we can achieve. I thought that process has concluded be specifically because we know what we can do to get to budget and we're just all, you know. So, so, I, so again, I just, uh, I'm mostly trying to consider the fact that if this is gonna adversely impact our final 90% budgets, I personally, I'll start the straw poll, think this is a bad idea. My read of today's meeting is the idea of trying to VE to current budget 102.8 is dead on arrival. Therefore, I thought you were suggesting continue VE to see what we could achieve without impacting the schedule. Right. And my opinion on that is we've done that. That's concluded. So I just don't understand why we're revisiting it. All right, I, my thinking is were we to revisit it, it would be to attempt to satisfy the other boards in town that we have been as uh, aggressive as we can in our efforts to cost contain this project in light of other town needs that are right. equally, uh, equally significant. Sure, right, but it also, there's a trade-off. We can say our priority is to satisfy other boards, or our priority is to get the best 90% construction documents possible. And that's sort of how I see this interpretation. And I would err on the latter because as Steve mentioned in his very wonderful summary, I believe we've done everything we can to satisfy other boards. But, if, but, but we've already heard Lorraine say she could go back to the rejected list and look at things. She's maybe our client court. What's she gonna maybe. say? Maybe, maybe the terrace is an example that she could 
help us revisit those items that would have no bearing on the 19 configuration, no bearing on the schedule. If, if I heard her correctly, she could do that. Sure. But we already rejected that, am I correct? Well, that was then and today is today, I guess. Situation and tomorrow in. will be tomorrow and January <laughs> and February and March are going to be here. I'm just worried. That's all. So, yeah. um, so I, I can dead. definitely see both sides of it. Yeah. There is a need to continue to monitor where we are with the design and make conscious efforts to reduce, to save money, to, you know, not impact the things that are a priority in this building. And Lorraine knows that she hears that loud and clear. She's been hearing that loud and clear. And if her team hears it through her, um, you know, I think I just want to be careful what we're asking them to do. So Chris, I assume you have discussion on this motion still. Yes. That's why yes. I raised my hand. You bet. I, 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 think, I think what Lorraine said and what Charlie said, and, and I apologize if I oversimplified it, I think they, they, they crystallized it well. Lorraine can make a pass through the rejected items and probably pretty quickly identify those that won't represent big design changes, protract the schedule, et cetera, and then come up with a number and say, this is the maximum potential. And maybe that number is not very big. I, I don't know it off the top of my head. You know, I, I imagine if she went through that exercise and said, there's potentially a million dollars that might get somebody's attention. By contrast, if it's a hundred thousand, you might say, that's the best we're gonna do. What does it really mean? I, I, am I getting that about right? And that's really to Charlie and Lorraine because I think you summarized it well. You're, it, it takes some work. Yeah, that's, it. That, that's what you do when you're up against it. But we're not talking uh, a lot of work relative to what you've done today. Is that about right, Lorraine? Yeah, I mean, I can, I can look at the list. You know, I'm looking at the list as I'm sitting here and. And I'm not the one doing the drawings anymore, but I can tell what's going to take us time and what isn't. You know, I've done them for many years. So, um, but I would want to. I would want to walk these through our team. To Dawn's point, we have been talking at. Every, we meet weekly internally as a full team. We've been talking about ways to cut costs, ways to be very efficient with our drawings to make sure that you know we're clear and concise. But I will walk it through with the team. Alexa, I appreciate your comment. I am your client. I understand the issues that you are facing. You are not alone. Every community is facing this. So, you know, it is responsible for us. It is responsible for you. I will walk through the list with the team, see if there's an opportunity to take anything. But I, I will say you have to be as responsible and be prompt with a decision because we cannot do a lengthy discussion again. So I would ask that back of you. We hear you, Lorraine. Um, can I just ask a follow up question before I call on Charlie, how quickly would you be able to turn that around and how quickly can we make this decision and get you moving forward on the 90 to go from 60 to 90, because you still have to put your 60% report out right like there you're not done with 60% and then you need to flow right into 90 so there's a lot of work ahead of your team I just want to not overburden you. Um, yep. But then also get you the answers that you need if this were to be something that we ask you to do. So without putting you on the spot, is there any sort of indication of how quickly this can happen? I would try and pull a team. Meet. Typically, our team meets every Wednesday morning, but I would try and pull a team meeting together, if not tomorrow, Monday, because in my selfish interest, I need to know soon. So, right. <laughs> you know, so all I'm going to do, to be fair, is at work with Ian, put an extra column in the in the VE log against the rejected items and say what's possible and what's not. Or I, frankly, I'm just going to say what's possible. We'll leave it at that. So I hope to have, I could, I want to have something out to you by next Tuesday for the leadership meeting. Okay. And um, to be clear on those rejected items, would it be a holistic rejection or acceptance or would it be a partial or could have been like how much I just want to understand <laughs> our committee is definitely thorough and has a lot of discussion and we've been through each one of these um, line by line and I appreciate that along the way. I just want to understand how like if there are 
say 10 items that are possible with very little um, or no schedule impact, um, is it, are you going to say it's all or nothing? Or are you yes. going to say, here's what's possible? Like how? I'm going to say it's all or nothing. If the, okay. if the question to me is schedule, I'm yeah. going to tell you it's all or nothing. So replace linole linoleum with VCT. You know, it's probably a couple of hours in the drawing, changing all the references to linoleum mm -hmm. and it's adding a VCT spec and pulling the linoleum spec. Yep. Right. Go back to the 10 years ago. But I'm, <laughs> no, I'm but it's not going to be replace only the classrooms and not yeah. the course. Yeah, right. I'm that's kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah. I'm not going there, frankly. Okay, it's all or nothing on that. It's and that's an easy nothing. one. That's a good example because it's changing some notes in the drawings that would take a few hours and then replacing the spec section with the BCT. So, okay. But I think we've all, you know, having talked about that substantially, we know that has another impact on maintenance and costs long term for Lori and her team. So and Russ. So, OK, very good. Thank you, Lorraine, for clarifying. Charlie. Yeah, I, I think that that uh, having support of the town leadership is an important it's an important variable for us. And I, I think that this is not an expensive operation. We're not going to affect the schedule. We're not going to affect cost because those are the rules and to simply blow off these boards and, and say, well, we're not doing anything because we've been there, done that and everything's done, concrete, finished, probably not a good move. And, you know, I think we need these people to support us at town meeting. Uh, you know, we need their, 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 uh, we need them to be on board. If that can happen, I don't know whether it can, but I think this is a, a, a fairly simple, straightforward, effort at doing the right thing to the extent that we can given our constraints so i, I think we should do it uh, and, I, and i agree with exactly what lorraine said and i would abide by those rules thank you charlie heather to the point of those rules if we're considering doing this can we figure out what the follow-up is as in does that mean we're in a meeting next week and can we commit ourselves to being through it in an hour. I mean, I, I just don't think we can ask everybody to sit, you know, for three hours again and rehash all the debates. So can we just specify? I was going to, yeah, I was going to put some parameters on if this moves forward. Um, I would love to, we had a canceled meeting next week that was supposed to be a follow-up to today that was determined we didn't need. I know Lori, um, uh, had previously said she has a commitment next week. She may not be able to join us, but I don't know. Um, I guess if there's no more discussion, maybe we can say we would move this forward at a meeting next week and, you know, have a whatever, like, I don't know time. I don't want to, I don't know how much there is. So I don't, I hate to put a time limit on something that I don't know how many items would be discussed. Um, Lori, I see your hand. Yeah, I think just procedurally, having been at all the FinCom and select board meetings personally, um, I'm going to ask Don that you and Pat reach out. I wish Matt was here. Obviously, he couldn't be. Reach yeah. out to the chairs of both boards. I'm. I understand the intent of the exercise, given some of what I've heard. I'm not quite sure it's going to meet the mark of some of the asks they've made or the concerns they've had or. Yeah, I, I, I understand the intent. So I do think we need to open up some communication with their chairs and see see what they'd be asking for and looking for. Or, okay, so you're asking us to reach out to them to say, this was proposed at our meeting. It, is this meeting the request of your committee or the is that what you're saying? Yeah, or, is or, it a helpful activity to address okay. the concerns they have? Because what I what I don't want to do, yep. and the committee, I would think you don't want to go through this activity, and then the neg if the feedback is that it didn't matter, and I just having heard and how much talk I've had with them and Pat and Don, part of that, um, the VD list hasn't met their needs completely, so I'm not sure a few more things is going to totally answer the questions they have. I, I just wonder if we're having the right discussion with them. That's all. Okay. Happy to reach out to, to them. That's Matt Johnson and Peggy, um, the chairs of those two boards. Yes, great. Good suggestion, thank you. Charlie, I see your hand again. Yeah, I, Christine is, is on, the, on the line with us, I think. And maybe 
we just get her thoughts right now for the extent to which she could provide them. Maybe she doesn't want to, but it's worth a try. I mean, I, I'm happy to hear what Christine says if she's comfortable. I also would prefer to reach out to Peggy as the chair. But I know Christine is the one of the represent, representatives, um, but I think going through the chair is probably the right procedure, but I'm happy to hear if Christine has thoughts or um, is it sure? Oh, let me make sure I get his name correct. Parshar. Shuresh. No, Shuresh. Yeah, I got it right. Yep. I wanted to make sure they're, yeah. So if I of them have thoughts, um, I'm yeah. Um, I I think Gloria's suggestion is a good one. Um, I don't. I can't speak for the committee. Um, I don't personally. For me, um, small changes to the VE um, probably won't change my view. But that's not me speaking for the committee, obviously. So I think it's a good idea to reach out to Peggy and and uh, Matt. Thank you, Chris, and I'm happy to do that. So I'll do it at the conclusion of our meeting today. Thank you, Chris. Any just a, other? Just a point of order. Yep. There's a, there's a, I think still a motion on the there table is. that's been seconded. Yeah, and I wouldn't otherwise take comment from the public, but I know that Chris is um, a representative of the finance committee, and in some ways, this is trying to, um, you know, keep those lines of communication with FinCom as well as Select Board and some of their concerns um, at the forefront of, you know, what we're talking about. So I was happy to have her speak, even though I wouldn't normally do that. Okay, any other discussion? Otherwise I'll call for a vote. Okay, move it. All right, Alexa, how do you vote? Oh, so uh, hold on, because it's been a bit. <laughs> Alexa made a motion to not, to not have our professionals revisit the um, rejected items in the uh, value management log. Um, as an exercise to see if there's additional savings that could be received um, in the interest of having them continue the work that they need to do in order to finish the documents. Did I represent that correctly, Alexa? Yeah, I'm wondering sometimes if motions in the negative are confusing, but so a vote yes would be to not have the professionals pursue this exercise. A vote no would be to, inc to vote in favor of this exercise. Correct, thank you for clarifying because it can be confusing. So point of order. Yes, Heather. To clarify, if you're reaching out to the chairs of the Select Board and Finance Committee, is this mm -hmm. dependent on that at all? Or I don't think so, but it may, I mean, I don't know, Lori, I think in the interest of time, uh, it sounded like Lorraine wanted to do this sooner than later. And I would hate to postpone that in the um, you know, waiting for Matt, who I know is away on business this week and, and Peggy to get back to us, but maybe that would inform anything that came out of this exercise if it were to go forward. Am I wrong? That's how I was assuming it would happen, but Lori, if you- Yeah, no, I, I think you've got competing time interests there. Right. But I'd hate to see us do this and both chairs say that really isn't gonna meet the needs of this. Right. Meet right. the questions they have and concerns they have. I mean, I suppose if um, this were to, um, if we were to ask them to go through this exercise via this vote and the chairs came back and said, no, 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 no we're looking for more, bigger, greater, then we could through communication, let the, um, let the committee know and then let the professionals know that, you know, it's not to halt the worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's my only thought. I don't know if others feel differently. Would this also help galvanize our team here as the building committee that we've, we've done as much as we possibly can. We we're, we're presenting our best foot forward given the situation today that we're, we're just having Lorraine only not her team double check one last time if there's anything that can be squeezed out so that the proposition of developing the project that we present uh, is definitely the best uh, you know, shot at it that we can collectively make. And then we can put this all behind us at this, in this group. I, I finished taking your vote, Don. Okay. All right. Uh, Alexa, how do you vote? Yes. Court Booth. No. Heather Bout. 
Um, man, I'm sorry. I'm still thinking. Can you come back to me? Sure. Frank Cannon. No. Uh, Justin's not with us. Peter. No, I think it's important that we go the extra mile. Okay. Um, I'm a no. John Harris. Oh, sorry, you're not voting, John. Sorry. Lori. Yes. Okay. Matt's not with us. Pat had to leave. Chris. No. Charlie. Yes. I, I'm sorry. No, no. Ah, see, good thing Alexa clarified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's no, always. No, yeah. I'm a no vote. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. I, I'm following you. Matt. No. And Steve. No, with the understanding that it's Lorraine only and not the. Okay, and back to you, Heather. And sorry, I'm gonna go no with the understanding that we wrap this up quickly. Okay, very good. I think the no's went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, just two yeses. Do I have that right? Eight to two, okay. So Lorraine, in the interest of time- I've got a question for you. Oh. Okay, get on one of these teams oh, yeah. here. Do I need a coupon first? <laughs> Court, you're not muted. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, so <laughs> Lorraine, the motion failed. Do I have the wording right? And right. we are going to ask you to go through this exercise, be expeditious with it, because we know that time is money, and we know your team needs to finish the documents. Can you? You're going. You were saying you were hoping to get us something by Tuesday, maybe Wednesday at the latest. Yes. Does this committee want to pick up that? next Thursday, 7.30 slot that was once held for a follow-up meeting for this meeting, which sounds like maybe that is actually what it is needed for. Um, and then put the, the balance of anything that uh, Lorraine may have um, been able to, to say could be reconsidered with no schedule impact, put that uh, discussion to bed so her team can move us forward. Yes? Is everyone who can I know Lori cannot, um, unfortunately. Uh, but Lori, if you have feedback based on what's shared out, feel free to share it with Pat and I, and we will communicate any, um, you know, uh, thoughts you might have on any items. Um, we'll we'll share that with the greater committee because your voice is always uh, critical to some of these conversations. And if anyone else, and that goes for anyone on the committee, if you can't make it next Thursday at 7.30, then please um, share any thoughts that you want the committee to hear that you may have. Okay. Right. So we'll, we'll work with yeah. SMA, we'll put together the short list and then we'll get the meeting back on the books for next Thursday. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you professionals for doing this with us. Uh, where are we on the agenda? Who was that? Okay, so that was the finance committee uh, discussion wrapping up public comment. I see a Ned Perry hand up. Mr. Perry, can you tell us who you are, where you live, and feel free to share your thoughts with us today. Good morning, Ned Perry, 362 Bedford Street. I appreciate all the work that you have done over many months. Particularly appreciate that last conversation and the vote. I would respectfully suggest that the uh, Co-chair Nelson's earlier narrow comment about the finance committee is to look at the impact of the projects on taxes of taxpayers is a bit limited. As you are all aware, the finance committee is appointed by the town moderator as the finance committee is to be the eyes and ears of the town meeting and that they have the responsibility to advise our town meeting on the, on the um, propriety of warrant articles that have a financial impact on the town. 20 years ago when I was a town moderator and there was a elementary school building project moving forward, it was a finance committee among several others that put a halt to it because it got way over budget. Just a cautionary comment. Thank you for the opportunity to make these com public comments. I appreciate it, Mr. Perry. Thank you for joining us today. Any other public comments? Last call. Okay, um, next steps, meetings. Um, I think we just talked about next, uh, bye Alexa, next Thursday, 7.30. 
Um, we'll do our best to be sensitive to time, but have the thorough discussions that need to be had. Um, anything else that I'm missing? Professionals, next steps. Um, Ian, you were going to send the link to the 60% estimate, estimating set. So yes. um, uh, committee members, please be on the watch for that. And then next week, share out the commissioning agents comments with the architectural responses, or not just architectural, um, the professional team, which would include their engineers, of course, so. Yep. Okay, all right, very good. Anything else before I call for adjournment? No? All right, 9.57, good job, everyone. Thank you all. Um, good discussion, good meeting. I, you know, I wish circumstances were different, but here we are. <laughs> I'm dealing with it professionally on all my other projects as well. So lots of sensitivity to the market right now. So I just want to say thank you for everyone's time and um, respectful conversation. It's been good. And we'll see you all next Thursday. We don't need any motions to adjourn. We just lose quorum. So everyone, Thanks, everyone. have a great day, guys. Bye, see you next thank week. You. Thank, thank you, you professionals. Everyone.